What is going on, Governor? It's Chiskool here, and today we're gonna give you some legit hacks to get to the very top of the Arms Master Lohar training board. Hello and welcome back. We're gonna talk about a bunch of things today to propel you to the very top of Arms Master Lohar's training event. We beat every single tier and some folks scored even higher than we did. They used some legit hacks to get there and we'll talk about exactly what those are. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides where we help you get value and beat your enemies, you should like and subscribe. We're a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms and we make daily videos to help you slay in this game. So consider subscribing. Let's get right into what we're gonna talk about today. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about the order of skills that you select for Arms Master Lohar. This makes a huge difference. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the pairings that you use for this fight. P.S. If you're not using cavalry, you're probably doing it wrong. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about the buffs and hacks that you can do uh, to get ahead in this event. And included in this, by the way, is going to be recommendations for uh, folks that are still powering up in the game uh, that are not yet at their T5 troops. Uh, with that said, I do want to couch this in saying that this is really an event that you need to be one of those big T5 players to score in the very, very top. This is not the style of event where if you have like saved up tons of action points, you can get ahead. Okay, let's talk about Arms Master Lohar's skills. This was a lot of fun to figure out how to approach. This, this was really quite enjoyable for me. If you missed the live stream uh, where we smashed this uh, with over a thousand people watching, uh, I'll put a card up in the top where you can see how this unfolds and exactly what happened when we use these different skills. Um, if you are one of those big T5 beaters, then the very first skill I recommend that you activate is Will of Battle. Uh, this is going to do a heal after 10 seconds after Lohar drops below 10%. Well, guess what, baby? You kill him so fast, he's not got 10 seconds to get that heal. So this is basically a free skill. Use this one first. The next skill is Thrill of Battle. Every 10 seconds, uh, you increase the attack and defense of Lohar by 10% over a maximum of 100%. Guess what? He dies in less than 20 seconds for sure. So free skill. This is like free, free. Take it. It's a slam dunk, easy pick. Um, the next one that I thought was a pretty reasonable pick is Rapid Regeneration. He is going to heal for 10% and then heal for another 10% over the course of 10 seconds. So 20% of health total. There's a non-zero chance that you slay this fool so fast that it's not going to be relevant and there are way more scary things that are going to show up. Those are the first three that I recommend that you do and the order that I recommend that you do them in. From there, it's a little less straightforward as to which ones you pick, although maybe somebody's cracked the code better than I have. Um, I'm just being honest and transparent with the order that I chose here. Um, I enjoyed Iron Resolve because I just have so much fun with Rage. This may not be the most optimal thing to choose, however. When I look at these skills, really good candidates for what I might do next is this one over here. Uh, reinforced Armor is probably your realistic next pick. Every 10 seconds, Lohar's troops gain a shield. Damage factor of 1,000 for 5 seconds. When the shield is active, incoming normal attack damage is reduced by 20%. The reality is that you're slaying him so fast, and you're doing so much damage. The decreased normal attack damage is not all that important, I suspect. This is probably the fourth one I would pick because you're trying to preserve the longevity of your marches. That's your objective. You want to have as many troops as possible at the end. This is not doing all that much damage to you. The way that you're taking more damage is because they live a little bit longer, but you are destroying so fast at the start that this is a great pickup. From there, you have some interesting choices. I'm sort of afraid of the extra counterattack damage because that's how you're taking the majority of your damage in this. I'm also a little bit concerned about poison arrows, although we're starting to get to a point where this could be a pretty good pick. 
Um, at this point, I went the route of taking the Iron Resolve because I'm doing so much skill damage and it doesn't seem like he is and he's dying so fast that like, just come at me, bro. So I went Iron Resolve at this point for the extra damage. Uh, so that is the fifth pickup. From there, um, I think that a good pick would be Poisoned Arrows. Poisoned Arrows did like... 96 damage a second. I don't love it. I don't love it. There might be a better pick, uh, but this seemed to be fine. The alternative would be this one over here. Um, this one makes it so that the defense of all troops led by Lohar is increased by 10%, and the counterattack damage is elevated by 50%, because pretty much all your damage up to this point is counterattack damage. I really wanted to shy away from this one. Um, so... That would be probably my next pick, and that leaves us only three skills left. Those include Master of the Bow, where you get disarmed. Um, it's basically a silence effect. It says normal attacks are disabled, um, but actually, I don't think you can also use your active skills, which really ends up being detrimental. Um, this was one of the more savage skills I found, and you can see in the live stream we did yesterday, that's the opposite of what I was expecting from it. Um, but this is probably the point at which I would take Master of the Bow. Uh, from here, I would take either Combo Shots or Strike of Vengeance. These are among the last ones that I would pick up. They seem to do the most damage. Uh, at least that's what we observed. Um, and at this point, Lohar is kind of turning into a super boss. Uh, I did Strike of Vengeance last and combo shots first, uh, but I would pro I would I would really consider testing going the other way, uh, strike a vengeance first, and then combo shots. This is one of the reasons why a con primary is not an amazing pick, and we'll talk about those pairings in just a second, uh, because you're going to fire off skills so fast that whenever he's damaged by a skill, he's going to retaliate with a strike of vengeance. That just seems less than amazing to me. All right, now that we've talked about the order in which we would do those skills, and I'll be candid when I say that the first skills were really confident, the last skills, somebody probably could math out a better, more exact order. Please drop a comment down below if you've done that, and I will pin that uh, comment if we think that you've really nailed it. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the combos you use to get these sweet rewards, and you do really want to be in the top 10. Uh, because Arms Master Lohar is a barbarian. That's right, he qualifies as a barbarian. If you look in the battle log, one of the very first lines that you'll see, and maybe even I've got one of those battle logs handy so I can just show you. Arms Master Lohar, battle log, um, engaged barbarians, Arms Master Lohar on the wild. So you want to do stuff that does extra damage to barbarians. Minutes out out is the slam dunk pick, and it's no coincidence, by the way, that we rank those commanders really quite highly among the uh, legendary commanders that you could invest in for cavalry. Card up in the top if you want to see that comparison of which legendary cavalry commander to invest in first. Um, so if you're using legendary commanders, Mina and Sao is the slam dunk pick. Anything other than those commanders is a non-optimal combination, at least from what we have observed so far. Um, and I think you do generally want to stick to your peacekeepers for this operation. Uh, we, uh, on our restart project, tried using Mina with a expertise Esong, okay? And it did worse than Mina with expertise Boudica. Boudica did better than Esong in this event, okay? So stick to your peacekeepers, that's the way to go for sure. Um, you could look at using Khan. I tried that with Minamoto as a secondary. I could not complete the event when I did it that way. And I very easily and handily completed the event with the Mina Tsao primary. But that also could be in part because of the skill order that I chose when I used a Khan primary. Check out that live stream from yesterday if you want to see how that unfolded. Um, I think that if you're looking in the epic tier, that either Boudica or Belisarius are the pick. Um, 
the challenge with Lohar is that you really lose out. Like, the expertise skill is wasted. The healing after leaving battle is wasted. The experience is completely wasted. The healing is completely wasted. Don't use Lohar. Um, Boudicca's really good. She does have some healing, but she did very well. I would be curious to see how a Belisarius compares. We didn't use Belisarius in our restart. Well, we did, but we don't have him expertise, so it's, it was sort of hard to say. Uh, but the thing I like about Belisarius is that he has 10% more damage to Barbarians than your Boudicca does. Um, there are other commanders that are just generally good, like Osman, but I would shy away from them. You really do need to stick to your Peacekeepers. This is not an event for Sun Tzu, even though he's a beast. Um, yeah, Sun Tzu generates lots of rage if you hit multiple targets. Here you'd be hitting only one, and so he is not the jam. I also tried to shy away from Ethelfled. She's good, but she wants you to bring a mixed march. So if you're using Ethelfled, it would have to be in the realm of an Ethelfled combined with Boudicca, and you bring a mixed march. I'm a lot of players have like a 5511 Minamoto or equivalent, and I feel like that's likely to be better than your expertise Ethelfled, in part because the Ethelfled is really much more focused on hitting lots of targets with her AoE. Also, she's going to use skills more frequently, which is going to be a detriment to you in this particular event. So, in short, Mina Tsao is the jam. Now, when we talk about equipment, because this commander, um, or because Arms Master Lohar is a barbarian, you do want to lean in on equipment that has damage to barbarians, such as the infantry breastplate or the edged boots. We did both of those. Helm of the Phoenix, I'm told, is really good. I don't know if the 4% cavalry attack is better than the 3% damage to barbarians. Uh, there are no cavalry stats on the Helm of the Phoenix, which makes me kind of shy away from that as a choice. Uh, there is also a totem you could get for one of these utility slots that does 10% damage to barbarians. I would not recommend going out of your way to craft that unless you're still on your way to T5. If you already have T5, look, you got bigger priorities for your gear. That is a slam dunk for sure recommendation. So, I like those choices, and here is the Minamoto build I would recommend. There are some points of flex here that you could move around. You could drop these points in Dragon Saber and that 1% of cavalry attack to get the 3% of attack over here, and then you've got like one point, I guess, to put in a Dragon Saber. Um, I avoid March Speed at all costs to get kind of maximum damage to Barbarians. You don't actually need Insight here to reduce the AP cost of battling Barbs, because guess what? Uh, it doesn't actually use AP when you battle Arms Master Lohar. It only uses AP to summon each round. Uh, in addition, I want to talk for just a second about the difference between attack, defense, and health. This is really misunderstood. Uh... I don't have all of the details of how these combat mechanics work. Lilith doesn't share that, and they leave it for us to explore. My understanding of how those work is as follows. Attack is going to increase the damage that you deal. It is good in situations where you're dealing damage to a target that is not likely to be dealing damage to you. Um, or if you're damaging or battling against one target, it tends to be better. Defense is really good in situations where you're getting hit by many targets because it reduces the damage that you take. Uh, that is very powerful if you are getting swarmed. This is not one of those events where you will be getting swarmed, but of course reducing the damage you take is helpful in an event where you need as much sustain as possible. And the last stat we should talk about is health. Health is really powerful uh, in both situations that we were just talking about. I would argue that it's less powerful than defense when you're getting swarmed because the defense is reducing the amount of damage that everybody is inflicting on you. Health is increasing the amount of damage every single troop can take, I think, before they die. Um, and so that's really good if you're not exactly sure what situation you're going to be in. Maybe you're battling some foes uh, in the open field. Maybe they're hitting you back. Maybe they're not. Health, I think, at that point is a really clean pick. Um, of course, those descriptions are all sort of available to you, and we're inferring that from looking in on individual units. So you can see that in over here, those descriptions, and uh, I'm making inferences from those descriptions. This is really important for the next part of what we're going to talk about, 
um, which is going to be all of the buffs you need, and then we'll get to the hacks. Uh, and those hacks are super legit to get to the top of the board. Um, so when we talk about the buffs you're going to want for this, you need 50% army expansion, a troop rune, uh, it could be attack or defense. I prefer attack for this. Um, or health. I had a health rune when I did it. Um, you need a token uh, between an attack or defense token. I prefer the attack token. Make sure your city skin is right. You could have an officer buff, uh, which I guess I've got at this exact moment over here, right? There's a few of those, troop health or attack and defense. Obviously, the 2% is better than the 1% health. Um, you can go into your commanders. Uh, you should set your primary commander to be the damage to barbarians. You could set your secondary to be the knight head for the 2% of stats. I think that's a slam dunk better than health or a troop attack for the 1% only. You do want to be on your alliance territory. Being on your alliance territory is going to give you an extra 20% attack, assuming that your alliance tech is maxed out. You could have a kingdom title. I know there's so many things here. You could have a kingdom title. Um, I had one last night on my live stream, not because I asked, because someone hooked me up, which was super cool. Uh, I try not to sort of abuse my uh, king access in order to win events. So I could have been, you know, very easily like, yo, Negan, king me, bro. And he would have been like, here you go, man. Uh, that's not at all how we talk to each other, by the way. Uh, but king has 15% of stats. I didn't do that. Um, we had just like the 5% or whatever percent of extra stats you get from the Duke and like that, that's fine, right? Like we're not, we're not trying to set the world record, although, although we could have. Um, and let's talk about how you set that world record. Uh, P.S. If I did miss one or two buffs, we almost need like a checklist. Oh yeah. War Frenzy. Scout a city, get 3% extra attack. Okay. Let's talk now. Oh, one more. Civilization. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Or we were Arabia, 10% extra damage uh, to neutral units. It's, it's actually a very big deal. That's like a savage totem worth of extra damage. Uh, we get the special unit, which helps a little bit, but honestly not that much. And also 5% extra cav attack is a pretty big deal. So all in all, there's just a ton of buffs that can help you along the way. Let's talk about the hack though. Okay, the hack is that when you're battling Arms Master Lohar, your march, although it can't go back to town, Although it can't get healed, it can get buffed. So you can battle barbarians nearby um, with uh, your Alexander the Great to give it a shield and also potentially to reduce the damage, uh, or to, I guess it's increase the damage taken by the target on an expertise to Alexander the Great. You also can have the Joan of Arc buffs as the secondary or primary with your Alexander the Great, which is going to give you 30% Cavalry defense for four seconds and 200 rage over the course of the four seconds. Yeah, I mean, that's the hack that people used to get ahead of my score. There may be some other hacks you can use to do that. Technically, it's in the game. It's allowed. My perspective on that is that if it's allowed, I guess you can go and do it. It doesn't seem as toxic to me as things like sending one troop at a pass to make sure that it heals or doesn't feel as toxic to me, certainly, as, you know, like, using cities to block passes, which is pretty standard fare in this game. So I think it's totally fine to go battle some barbarians and uh, give yourself some buffs as you're doing this event. You can summon level 12 barbarians outside your city by searching for them. I thought you used to be able to search for level 18, but the highest I could search for was a level 12. So you're going to need to bring a really small amount of troops in order to battle that level 12, in order to get those buffs for the duration of your fight. And you're going to have to do that enough times that your Arms Master Lohar is actually within range of one of those barbarians, which, look, if you've got the time, patience, and energy, you too can get even higher on the leaderboard. And that's not something that we feel like we need to do, quite frankly. Um, my friends, if you have enjoyed this video, please do drop a like. It's 100% free, costs you nothing. It's like giving me a high five, but you can't catch a virus this way. So drop a like onto this video. Consider subscribing for more guides to completely slay in this game. And be on the lookout for a spring event guide coming to you later today. Because, yo, we got your back. We got your back. And definitely tune in for Ark of Osiris League this weekend. We are going to be live streaming 
all of the times when we are not playing. And let me tell you, you are not going to want to miss the matchups this weekend. We're going to cover 1,300 and we're going to cover 1,900. We are going to be battling at 1,500. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the king.